So I just released a compilation video with five other guitar players and it's basically the solos to the top hair metal songs of all time and uh, it was a lot of fun to make but it was a lot of work. Some of those solos were killers, uh, especially the Dawkins solo for Heaven Sent. <laughs> But surprisingly, the solo to Unskinny Bop gave me a lot of trouble. So what I did was I took the isolated guitar track and I slowed it down 50% and I tried to learn every note and then slowly speed it up over time. That's what I like to do every time I learn a solo. I also like to watch live versions of the solos to see how they're played by the actual artists. And I know that they usually don't play it like the studio exactly, but I thought, you know, at least maybe CC will be close and I get kind of a decent idea of what he's doing. Uh, but this is what I ended up seeing. So you could probably tell that it wasn't a big help for me to watch him play that. Uh, it was a crazy, chemically-fueled guitar spasm, I would call it. Now, after I put out that video, I got excited about coming back to this live version and just trying to wrap my head around it. I thought, wouldn't that be fun to slow that version down and try to learn uh, what CC is doing, you know, even though he's just going crazy and going off and doing whatever he feels like at the moment. Uh, it's pretty incredible that he was able to play an entire solo without actually playing the solo, just completely faking his way through it. He didn't use any phrases at all from the actual solo, and it's just mind-blowing that he did this on live television and uh, got away with it. Anyway, I thought it'd be a lot of fun to just go through this phrase by phrase with you, and uh, I'll show you what he's doing or very close to what he's doing in this crazy live performance. Okay, let's go from the beginning. Did you notice that crazy catch that Brett Michaels does? Someone from the side of the stage throws a shaker or a tambourine clear across the stage and he makes this awesome catch. Okay, so I'm gonna slow it down to 50% like I would when I'm learning it note for note and uh, just so we can have some sort of a pace that we can handle at this point. Okay, that'll be phrase one. It's based around the A blues scale and he launches into it like this. So the more erratic you can make those bends, the better. Now some pull-offs mixed with this really interesting walk down actually. And he tops off that phrase with some crazy whammy bar and this is something he does all over the solo. So he'll hit a natural harmonic and then he'll pull up on the bar or he'll just go crazy with it. In this case, he hits the third string, fourth fret and just pulls it up. Sounds like the guitar is screaming or something. Okay, what's next? Oh yeah, the salute. One of my favorite parts of this is that he still goes crazy with the whammy bar. He hits some higher harmonics. He goes like... And then he takes his fretting hand and salutes the crowd, which is hilarious because he could have done that easily with his picking hand and just held out a chord the whole time or a note and just used his free hand, his picking hand to do that. But he elected to let go completely, mute the strings, salute the crowd, and then go back to playing guitar. So I thought that was hilarious. After he does the salute, he slides up the string and does this insane bend. Followed by a pretty logical guitar lick. The next bend that he does I call the cat bend because it kind of sounds like the sound a cat might make if you accidentally stepped on its tail. It's really hard to emulate that but it's something like... After the cat bend, we get this. Now, did he mean to do that? I don't think so. He's on autopilot at this point, but uh, it's actually kind of cool. Yeah. 
Now he goes back to the harmonics and he does a really quick double pull up. More chaotic whammy bar. I don't know, just go nuts with the bar. Okay, this part was very interesting to figure out. So he starts off kind of with the same motif he did earlier. Then he does this sort of chromatic walk down. The faster and the sloppier, the better. It's kind of a fun exercise, actually. I had to slow the next part down to 25% at one time to figure out the notes. And he's actually doing something quite structured, surprisingly. Here's what I discovered. It's this pattern and then it's moved up two frets each time, so a whole step jump. He just does it faster so it sounds crazy. And then he bails on it completely. He just gives up on that climb. He was actually building up to something. He's just like, forget it, dive bomb. The last one though, he hits some kind of subsonic level, some uh, god mode or something kicked in. But it's this insane, I think it's a 1.7 or a 2 harmonic. Those of you who know how to do natural harmonics and dive bar stuff, dive bomb stuff, will know what I'm talking about. Very hard to emulate. Now after he does that, it's the end of the solo, and you hear the crowd go crazy. Watch and I kept thinking that had to have driven thousands of guitar players nuts if they watch that because they're like, really, after what he just did, that non-solo solo that he just played, everyone just cheers, and then they show Ricky Rocket drumming like nothing happened, like he didn't just see the craziest solo of all time right in front of him. The rest of the band, by the way, were total pros, you know? It's kind of funny because the crazier C.C. DeVille seemed to get, the more the rest of the band had to kind of pull the weight. And I always thought it was like Brett Michaels was like the mom of the family, you know, trying to keep everyone calm, keep up the appearances while the drunk dad is in the other room, like throwing furniture around and uh, swearing it up. So I always thought that was the interesting part of the later years of Poison, you know, the 91 years right before he got fired. And uh, it was some kind of magic, but it was also so volatile that it couldn't keep going. It was like a train going full speed and barely staying on the tracks until it wasn't. All right, I love to watch that solo every once in a while just to remind me to let loose sometimes. You know, as a teacher, sometimes I put a lot of emphasis on trying to do things perfect, trying to play note for note what the solo is on the album. But sometimes you just have to rip it out with passion. You know, obviously CC went overboard, but it's a good reminder that we should inject some of that into our playing uh, and really go for that emotional side of playing and not just be stuck in our heads and be completely technical all the time. If you find a balance between both worlds, it seems to be the magic sweet spot. And uh, that's kind of the place I like to try to solo from whenever I can. All right, everyone, I hope that was fun for you to watch and we'll catch you at the next lesson. Feel free to check out that hair metal compilation or collaboration that I just put out. Uh, it's a lot of fun. We have two volumes so far. The third one's coming up and it's gonna be the final one. So uh, check those out if you can. All right, everyone, we'll catch you at the next video. Thank you, bye-bye.